Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for everyone who stayed to the last presentation today. Your attention would be greatly appreciated. Um, I would also like to thank the Aspetar Organizing Committee for giving me the opportunity today to present my undergraduate project in my fourth year, entitled Evidence that the Rate of Heat Storage Does Not Mediate an Anticipatory Feedback Mechanism During Self-Paced Exercise in the Heat Under the Direct Supervision of Dr. Ollie J. So as Julian had mentioned before in a recent paper by Tucker and colleagues in 2006, they provided evidence that the self-regulation of exercise intensity is mediated by an anticipatory mechanism to avoid homeostatic catastrophe. And in the figure below, I can briefly outline their proposed mechanism. And if you look on the figure to the left, we can see that the rate of heat storage in the hot condition in, during the first 10 minutes of exercise was 20 kilojoules per minute. And they suggested that this caused the feed forward mechanism to decrease power output later on in exercise to further reduce the chance of uh, getting home to homeostatic catastrophe, a critical rise in core temperature. However, what's most interesting in this graph on the left is the rate of uh, heat storage in the cool condition. And it's negative 5 kilojoules per minute on average during the first 10 minutes of exercise. Now, to further evaluate that number, and Julian had shown this graph before as well, the one where you get minute per minute averages for the rates of heat storage uh, in the cool condition is negative 87 kilojoules per minute at a work rate of 20, uh, 245 watts. Now, to put this conceptually, negative 87 kilojoules per minute is the equivalent of someone cycling naked, neg uh, negative 20 degrees Celsius with a headwind of 30 kilometers an hour, not the conditions proposed by Tucker. And so in a viewpoint paper published by Jane Kenny in 2009, they suggested that some of the limitations might be due to this two compartment model. As a basic equation for a two compartment, two compartment thermometric model is a change in mean body temperature times the specific heat capacity of the tissue times the mass of the subject. More specifically, the two compartment model for mean body temperature is a weighting coefficient to the core and a weighting coefficient to the skin. From, furthermore, the rectal temperature may be the poor indicator for early changes in core temperature at the onset of exercise. So the figure on the right is Nielsen and Nielsen 1965. And if I can direct your attention to the lower portions, which is the esophageal temperature over time and rectal temperature over time below. And we can see that the onset for rectal temperature is much later than the esophageal temperature. And the rate of rise between both is very different. So the purpose of our present, our, the project in my fourth year undergrad was to reevaluate the findings by Tucker and colleagues in 2006 using a same protocol with slight modifications to address their limitations, and two, to assess whether the conclusions were dependent on the two compartment thermometry model used and to compare with partitional calorimetry. So our hypotheses, different weighting coefficients in the two compartment thermometric model will alter their conclusions. The rate of change in esophageal temperature over time will be similar between all conditions, which may give us a better indication of the heat uh, content during the body. But however, we will not provide uh, calor met, uh, calories or heat kilojoules associated with changes in esophageal temperature. And lastly, the heat storage values estimated with partitional calorimetry during the first five minutes of exercise are positive rather than negative, whereas the Tucker and colleagues suggested during the first four minutes it was actually negative in both the norm and cool conditions. Our methods, we had eight endurance trained volunteers. The subject characteristics are below. They're quite similar, if not almost identical, to the Tucker population. Uh, we had them go through five sessions, one preliminary session to assess VO2 peak, and a familiarization trial, and three experimental sessions. The three experimental conditions are illustrated below. We have cool, norm, and hot, 19, 25, and 34 degrees Celsius, with all relatively similar absolute humidity values. Uh, anything denoted in red are the additional measurements or methodological changes we had employed to further enhance the protocol. So we included 30 minutes of baseline prior to exercise to have all the participants equivalent to the environment. We instructed them to maintain an RP of 16, and the trials ended when participants reached 70% of initial five-minute peak power output. We also took metabolic heat production. Uh, we included esophageal temperature and local sweat rates of the lower back and thigh, as these locations are known to have the earliest onset times during exercise. We assess the rate of heat storage using three ways. We use the two compartment thermometric models. We use core shell weightings of 0 0.79, 0 0.21, which were the standards of Tucker and colleagues. We also had one where we increased the weighting of skin, decreased the weighting of skin, and uh, eliminated it completely. We assessed the rate of heat storage using esophageal temperature over time. I, as I mentioned before, though, we do not quantify it with uh, kilojoules or calories. We just look at it as a mere difference in temperature over time. And lastly, partitional calorimetry using the conceptual heat balance equation below. 
So as a result, let's go for performance results. As you can see on the left, the, tri the trial duration was longest in the Norman Cool versus the hot condition, which is what we expect. And we see the same decrease in power output over time as Tucker and colleagues had put, uh, put forth. Additionally, just because I'm in the cardiovascular section, the only cardiovascular measurement we took was heart rate, and it was similar throughout all three conditions over the first 20 minutes of exercise. Now on to assessing the rates of heat storage. So using the two compartment thermometric models, for the first graph I'm going to show you is the same weighting of rectal and skin as Tucker and colleagues, 0.79, 0.21, and we have this large difference between the hot condition and the cool condition. Now if we increase the weighting of skin temperature on the effects of two compartment thermometric models, we increase this magnitude of difference between that at the two minute time point between the hot and cool condition. And if we reduce the influence of skin temperature on mean body temperature and eliminate completely, we reduce the, we, uh, reduce the significance, uh, the magnitude and the significance, and we, already, we eliminate it completely when we just take core temperature. And now to further emphasize that, you can see during the first time uh, five minutes of exercise, the rate of change in the rectal temperature is fairly similar between all three conditions. However, we have this massive decrease in skin temperature at the start of exercise and that could uh, influence our mean body temperature calculations in the previous slide. So the next way we assess the rates of heat storage was using the change in esophageal temperature over time. And if we look at that, uh, that same time point, we can see that the change in esophageal temperature during the first five minutes of exercise was quite similar, therefore perhaps indicating that the rates of heat storage during those uh, first five minutes of exercise were positive in all conditions. However, we cannot quantify that just based off the esophageal temperature. It's, it should be assumed that that's what's going on. So that's why we went additionally into partitional calorimetry. So as you can see below, the, we have the conceptual heat balance equation. And to be able to quantify the rates of heat storage using partitional calorimetry, you need to be able to evaluate heat production and heat loss avenues. Now, unfortunately, in our setup, we cannot quantify the amount of heat loss through evaporation in the hot condition, since we did not measure our participants uh, during our intervals during this time point, we can't quantify the amount of evaporation that occurred versus the amount of uh, sweat that dripped onto the ground. So therefore, we will only normalize the data, or sorry, only ev evaluate the average of the first five minutes during the normal cool condition. That way, we can satisfy the equation. And as we can see here, the average heat production during the first five minutes for the normal cool condition were quite similar. The dry heat losses uh, during both conditions was similar as well. So therefore, the rates of heat storage using partitional calorimetry should therefore be quite similar. However, when you evaluate these against the two compartment thermometric models employed by Tucker, not only are they negative on average during the first five minutes of exercise, they're also significantly different between conditions and within conditions in comparison to partitional calorimetry estimates of rates of heat storage. So therefore, in conclusion, Different core shell weighting coefficients altered the estimations, thereby leading to multiple conclusions. As I denoted before, if you increase the skin temperature weighting on mean body temperature or, or decrease or eliminate it completely, you can draw different conclusions. The change in esophageal was similar in all conditions, suggesting that the rate of heat storage was not different throughout all three conditions and during the early stages of exercise. And lastly, partitional calorimetry identifies that the rate of heat storage is positive and similar in the norm and cool condition. Thank you everyone for your attention, and if you have any questions, I would be free to address them. <laughs> Thank you for your, hi, that works. <laughs> Thank you for your presentation. I was wondering if you plan to do, or maybe you already did, the same experiment, but using a three compartment model with muscle temperature. Uh, no, we did not do muscle temperature, nor did we plan on doing muscle temperature. However, it would be a good idea, as I remember from all these uh, postdoc papers uh, where he did three compartment models, it was a little bit of a better estimation. However, using two compartment models or three compartment models still under or overestimated uh, rates of heat storage. So there might be a chance of changes in muscle temperature over the early stages of exercise that might indicate changes in performance or subsequent changes in performance. However, not the current focus. How long was the resting period before to start the exercise? So before the start of exercise, they equivalented with the environment for 30 minutes. So if they were doing the 15 degrees 
the, or sorry, the 19, the 25, or the 34, they were within the environment for 30 minutes. And that was to stabilize uh, skin temperature, basically, at the start of exercise, because that was one of the compounding variables for the Tucker paper, where they showed that they basically had their participants shuttled into a room of a different environment condition, and their two compartment models fluctuated greatly due to the fact that they entered the room and their changes were just ginormous. I think in the 20 or the 15 degree room, they dropped temperature by two degrees on the skin, and that's where they got these negative 87 kilojoules per minute. Mm -hmm. So, I did. We, we did some recording in which participants perform a first exercise in the environment, so acting as a warm up, and then in the second exercise, taking into account the muscle temperature, so a three compartment model. Mm -hmm. Actually, the rate of heat storage was lower in the heat than in temperate, because they start already from a much higher temperature, mm -hmm. so the rate of heat storage was pretty low. Yeah. No. Thank you. One quick question. Um, do you remember, just out of curiosity, what the power output was for the first few minutes of exercise in the different conditions? So for Tucker's uh, paper, they had a difference of 20 watts within their first three conditions. They had 261, 245 in the cool, and 250, I think, for the norm. For our condition, both the, norm, the cool and hot condition had 219 watts at the first five minutes of exercise, and the uh, norm condition was 223 watts. So there were within five watt difference between all three conditions. So it Did you see a, a, rate of, a different rate of decrease in power output compared uh, to them? I, I may have missed that. But uh, so watts per minute, for example? Uh, yeah, so we did it over the first 20. I uh, know, so I know what you're saying. Uh, over the course of the f entire duration. I didn't look at the data as, as such. However, when you look at our change in power output over the first 20 minutes, uh, not only do we all show every participant, because every participant made it to at least 20 minutes, which is another uh, co-founding variable for the Tucker and colleagues paper, uh, we show a similar rate uh, decrease over time. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you, very nice presentation. Actually, I think uh, your data looks much better and much more clear than the, 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 Thank the you. Tucker data. <laughs> but I, st I still have a question because the, the title of your talk is that uh, heat storage doesn't lead to an anticipated uh, regulation of, of, of that. But you said that in, in, in the Tucker paper, because they entered the chamber, in, indeed, there was in initially there was a reduction in heat storage, mm -hmm. so therefore this could have led into a possible. I'm not saying that I, mm -hmm. I personally agree with that, but this could have led to an anticipatory reduction in 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 uh, uh, power output. So, or at least you cannot see that with your data because you didn't do that. I n I understand what you're saying. Uh, however, if we look at the skin as a factor for rates of heat storage, uh, the skin is uh, not as dense as, i.e., the core, and if the core is not changing over time, and uh, within their condition, their core temperatures were identical between all three, and we show the similar values. So if you look in the middle, we have uh, esophageal temperature and rectal temperature during the first 20 minutes of exercise, and they're almost identical. Therefore, the only thing that may play a part in this anticipatory mechanism, and it was I d I, uh, shown and identified in the Tucker paper was skin temperature, perhaps during the early stages of exercise that might influence it. I'm not suggesting that use of, or sorry, rather the use of thir two compartment thermometric model to estimate the rates of heat storage is, could under or overestimate the values. So therefore using something like partitional calorimetry or uh, a direct calorimeter might actually give us the best, if not the most possible answer. I agree with you, and I yeah. agree that your methods are much, much more clear. But uh, I'm just, uh, I see a, 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 a misconnection between the title of the talk and the conclusions. Mm. What I mean is that with your data, you cannot say whether actually the Tucker theory exists or not, or it, it, mm -hmm. uh, it holds true or not. Because, because of the fact that you guys correctly mm -hmm. uh, uh, put people th for 30 minutes to stabilize them, mm -hmm. you cannot really answer whether their error mm -hmm. actually led to their finding or not. And if we go to the partitional calorimetric values that we had obtained, we can see that the rates of heat storage using partitional calorimetry were similar between the norm and cool, and the rates of change in esophageal temperature were similar between all three conditions. So uh, assuming that 
perhaps all three conditions are the same we, based off the esophageal temperature. We can perhaps suggest that the rate of heat storage in the hot condition was similar because there's also sweating occurring in the hot condition. Therefore, um, we can perhaps I think that the rates of change or the rate of heat storage in all three conditions are similar. I understand what you're saying. If you're losing skin, like con heat content from the skin immediately as you enter the room, or you're gaining heat from the environment, that perhaps could confound the idea the idea of rates uh, mediating the selective decrease in power output. I I, I understand that I, that idea. It's just at the start of exercise when you're starting. I, I guess it's looking at it from two different ways. I, I understand you, I understand what you're coming for though. No, and it's okay. It's yeah. okay. <laughs> I just want to pick up on that. Yeah. Um, just to be clear, though, in in the, the the Tucker paper in 2006, they still saw a um, a, a rapid decrease in skin temperature during the following the, the onset of exercise, probably due to the, the they measured skin temperature in four different spots, 40 percent on the legs, and it's probably the increased convection of the legs as they start moving. Um, and we did see. While we did equilibrate the participants with the environment for a longer period, we still did see that dip in, in skin temperature following the onset of exercise. And we still did see the estimated negative rates of heat storage with the same uh, thermometry model. They, they just wasn't quite as pronounced, but we still did see the difference. So, But yeah, mm -hmm. thank you for the comments. It's good. Yeah. Thank you very much.